Hello Indie Game fans, I've covered upcoming action RPGs, both third-person and isometric, along with party-based C RPGs, so here are the rest of them, with mainly turn-based Japanese-style RPGs or JRPGs, but there are also quite a number of RPGs that don't quite fit neatly into any one box, so let's begin with Eco Breaker, where I specifically chose this game to kick us off since it takes inspiration from the Japanese titles from the 90s, think Xenogears for example, with visuals to match, and it's just awesome that something like this can exist. I'm not quite sure what shape Earthlock 2 will end up taking, since the sequel to an excellent PS2 era throwback RPG has apparently gone open world and might even be an action RPG now, but it looks neat and they are doing some clever things with their Steam page, so indie developers, go check it out. This video is brought to you by Battle Juice Alchemist, a gorgeous looking alchemy RPG that is both isometric real-time action RPG combat as well as more JRPG style one-on-one -on -one combat. You play as an alchemist exploring the wilderness that was once New England, which is now overrun with demons, having to craft powerful concoctions and flasks and then to use them to unleash hell on your enemies. There's a deck building like system since you randomly draw from a selection of flasks that you have with each type of concoction having a normal effect as well as a juiced up version. There's class Classic isometric overhead ARPG action as well as real-time turn-based combat in which you have to input to attack and dodge enemy attacks, aided of course by bullet time, all as you build out your own alchemist tower and gather the strength required to fight back the demons. This will be part of the Steam Nyx Festival beginning February 5th with the demo available right now so go play it and wishlist the game. I came across Felvidec on Twitter, which got my attention due to the art style, and yes, while it does run on RPG Maker, they have wrangled that generic engine into creating quite the interesting looking game. The PS1 era style visuals are of note, as is the colour palette and art style chosen, as well as the intentional 4x3 resolution, and while it has classic turn based combat, the animations in first person do look unique. This is set in 15th century Upper Hungary, which I'm not familiar with, so I'll be interested in the narrative and historical context as well. There are quite a number of turn-based RPGs with rhythm or music elements to them, one of which is Fretless The Wrath of Rifson, which from the title alone, you will know that it's a musically inclined title already. You are battling devilish goons and monsters in order to save the land from the villain Rick Rifson using, I presume, the power of rock in order to do so. With the collection of rifts and assigning them to your deck being a central mechanic, along with a good pixel art look. The dad in me is showing since Yoke Heroes along Tamago, get it, is one part Tamagotchi, one part idol game and one part RPG in which you are raising a hero to defeat the Dark Lord, having to take care of a little elf egg, wait until it hatches and then to train and guide your hero. It can be relatively hands off since you only need to check in a few times a day once the hero grows up although I do wonder how replayable this game is and I guess we'll find out very soon. This next title looks like Darkest Dungeon and plays like Slay the Spire, but as far as I know, it's not a roguelite, rather being a narrative RPG that does have a non-linear plot, which makes Meijin, the Red Project Stories, quite the curiosity. It has an emotion system, as indicated by the purple and orange meter at the top of the screen, as well as deck building elements and two playable characters. This has been in development for quite a while, so maybe 2024 will finally be the year. We go from very grimdark to the polar opposite of that in Hermit and Pig a comedy-adventure RPG that is on the more light-hearted end of things, where a reclusive hermit and his truffle pig uncover the mystery surrounding a sinister corporate plot. The main thing here is the art style, 
with the bear enemy in this trailer in particular not really looking the most realistic or the best, but the key thing is that it fits in perfectly with the rest of the game, showing that pixel art perfection is not a necessity to have a great looking game. It's weird and interesting and it's something really quite different, so it's definitely on my watch list. Here's a game which I did consider for the CRPG list, but Pause on the Sand, Lionessi Sins, is pretty unique and one of a kind, so it wasn't quite the right fit there as well. Yes, it's a party based RPG with narrative dialogue choices to make, and plenty of stats and attributes for your heroes, but it plays like a side scrolling platformer and has an interconnected world like a Metroidvania. You can probably see why this game is here, since it doesn't quite fit neatly into any one box, so another curiosity for sure, with it having an oddly specific release date in May 2026, so I wonder if it will actually come to pass, check back in with this video in 2 years I suppose. This next title is of interest primarily because of how different it is to their previous game in the grim dark turn based tactics title Other Side, which looks like this, in which Nova Hearts is a dating sim RPG that is plenty pink and purple. A mysterious force transforms the attractive people in town into both superheroes and supervillains, engaging in classic turn based combat. But there's also a romance and dating sim aspect, as well as the mystery of the cosmic force mentioned earlier, with the developers having just released their free first chapter titled The Spark, so you can check that out as well. Another long in development title that I'm close to putting on the vaporware list is Glitch, an interesting looking pixel art title that has earthbound vibes and does break the fourth wall as well. A mysterious glitch has occurred in the world which causes an NPC named Gus to become aware of you, the player, so you must work together to unravel the mystery and to save Gus's hometown. The weird meta layer might result in interesting storytelling, having a unique essence system that is reflected by the colour of Gus's cap affecting how other characters will react to him and will result in unique playthroughs of the game. Here's another throwback title that has been chugging along in development titled Odd Venture, one that is set in a cursed fairy tale world, so think original Grim Brothers, but there's an interesting otherworldly aspect to the game. It does have regular turn based combat and even looks like earthbound in some spots, but the wacky and crazy world and setting of the game is the main draw to me, not to mention excellent pixel art, so here's hoping it releases soon. A wonderful pixel art title is A Frog's Tail, one that stars an adorable frog and has an almost Zelda style action adventure type exploration and traversal, but that is mixed in with Mario RPG style turn based combat but with a rhythm twist. Our hero investigates the presence of abnormally large bugs in the forest, but then gets swept up in a larger adventure that takes him on a quest to find an artifact that is supposed to be able to resurrect the dead. The rhythm combat looks awesome in an almost rhythm heaven kind of way, with the art, animations and expressions of the characters being awesome as well, so it looks like an absolutely fantastic title that I cannot wait to play. This title comes to us from the developer of the traditional turn based roguelike Tango Deep, in which they've made a Tetris RPG of all things titled Flowstone Saga. 
It is set in a classic high fantasy world in which our heroine is exploring a chain of mysterious islands, delving into ancient forgotten ruins and battling both monsters and humans alike. I'm not even the biggest Tetris person, but this is of interest, partially due to the pedigree, but also my own curiosity as to how the combat works and the progression in this game. It was successfully kickstarted in 2021, with a then estimated delivery date of July 2022, so it is overdue as Kickstarter games tend to be, so maybe 2024 will be the year. Developer Pixelated Milk made the underrated Regalia of Men and Monarchs as well as the darkest dungeon like Warsaw, which has since become completely free and renamed Warsaw Rising City of Heroes, so the next game is of interest in Sacrifice, a so-called modern JRPG-inspired title with combat that mixes both real-time and turn-based elements perhaps in a manner similar to Wandering Sword from 2023. As such, it's not quite a turn-based RPG and not quite an action RPG, so it ends up here, with the world mixing both sci-fi and fantasy as well and has a good look. In Warsaw, it doesn't take much to find yourself in a predicament. It feels familiar. Is I keep discovering how much has changed during my absence. I'm a thaumaturge, and staring into the depths of the human soul is my craft. As classy as that sounds, there are times where I have to get my hands dirty. Hey, Suski! This next title is perhaps not so indie, since their LinkedIn company page says that they have 51 to 200 employees, comprising of ex AAA developers, and is based out of Poland, in which the Thaumaturge comes to us from the developer of the underrated stealth action title Seven The Days Long Gone from 2017, which I did cover on this channel all those many years ago. They have expanded their ambitions into making what looks like a very much more ambitious title, where through this, I've also learned what Thaumaturgy is, translated into wonder working, or the purported capability of a magician to work magic, according to Wikipedia, set in 1905 Warsaw with mystical elements. Our protagonist has this power and must use it to navigate life, being a full RPG in which your choices will matter and have consequences. Combat is turn based and otherwise looks like a JRPG but with the in-between bits being more akin to games like Vampire and is releasing very soon. Here's a neat looking Paper Mario style title named Escape from the Ever After, which, as the title suggests, is set in a fairy tale world, but one in which a greedy corporation is attempting to exploit the fairy tale characters for profit. Our hero joins the corporation and has to climb the corporate ladder to dismantle it from the inside, visiting a variety of worlds, including those of Lovecraft, which I was not expecting given the art style. The Mario style action turn based combat looks fun and has a cast of weird and interesting characters, looking like it could be a hit as well. This next title has also been in development for quite a while since it was kickstarted in 2021, so it is 2 plus years after the campaign, which, to be fair, is a relatively normal kind of timeline for a key locker, but it's of interest especially since it comes to us from the developer of Virgo vs the Zodiac, which is great. This time, instead of astrology, their inspiration is cyberpunk instead, taking place in a world where the authorities have banned music and where our heroine and her band have to serenade the rebellion as they fight back. Naturally, this means rhythm elements in the game, both in the traditional Guitar Hero style note highway as well as in the turn-based combat, having a very interesting pixel art style and colour palette chosen. The cyberpunk themes seem to be well developed, and since the original target was August 2023, maybe 2024 will be the year of release. Here's 
here's an interesting looking JRPG title that kind of looks like Pokemon, but its own tagline is that this ain't no effing kids game, in which the Age of Allegoria has the main character directly fighting monsters instead, being able to harvest the body parts of your enemies for money and personal satisfaction. So this isn't your mama's Pokemon despite looking like it. The throwback look is excellently done, with the progression in this game being based on pieces of equipment that you need to master, with it having coarse language and perhaps some not safe for work monster designs. It just so happens that their Kickstarter campaign should be live on the 1st of February, so anytime now, depending on when you watch it, we have included the link in the description below. There are a number of RPG titles that don't have combat such as Raccoon, games which I call the narrative RPG, in which Moth Qubit is another such title. It has a little bit of a creepy vibe but I don't think it's a straight up horror game as far as I know, in which our hero lives the corporate life as an employee in a big company but there's a mysterious event known as the final process that is hanging over it all. The stinger at the end of this trailer suggests something much darker and more sinister, certainly looking like an intriguing prospect. I was quite excited when I came to know of Tears of Magic, since this is one of the only indie games that cited Breath of Fire as an inspiration as compared to Final Fantasy or Chrono Trigger, where I loved those games growing up, so it immediately got my attention. You play as a dragon who has a human form in a very classic save the world kind of story and does look pretty good so far due to the pixel art. However, the bad news is that this went to Kickstarter but their campaign was unsuccessful but the developers are still working on it, perhaps looking for a publisher for funding or something but it's one to keep an eye on. Developer Something Classic Games, if you couldn't already tell from the name, is a developer that specialises in throwback to these JRPGs with Shadows of Adam from 2017 being good, so their next title, Quartet, is of interest as well. Curiously, while it is named Quartet, there are 8 playable characters with intertwining stories in which you can play the first 4 stories in any order until they coalesce, being a setup that is similar to Octopath Traveler. Combat here is interesting since your party has 4 characters, but you can swap in any of the other 4 at any time with no penalty, in which using this to your advantage will be critical to success. As Kickstarter page states December 2022 as the release target, so that has slipped, but 2024 does look fairly likely. Here's another awesome looking pixel art JRPG in Beloved Rapture, a game that I have covered in the past and looks like it will be releasing soon in Q1 2024. It appears to have a classic hero's journey type of story arc of a young man from the countryside drawn into a conflict due to a cultish militia. I'm guessing some major event like the raising of his village will occur in the opening, then our hero will find himself at ground zero having to build up his strength and party along the way before confronting the big bad, but that's all speculation on my part, with the pixel art here being easy on the eyes. An interesting if trend-jacking kind of RPG is The Backbone, an earthbound style turn-based RPG with character designs, art style and even combat interface to match, but does have horror elements since you are facing off against Slenderman types and all sorts of fleshy abominations in the twisting hallways of The Backbone. 
this has to be inspired by the back rooms, the liminal space horror creepypasta that has seeped into everything, and while I'm not usually a horror game person, I am still interested in this. The trailer does also show some action adventure style real-time combat as well, so there's a mix of both, with the writing and narrative being key to this game. If you love Knuckle Sandwich from 2023, I'm pretty sure that Athenian Rhapsody will be your game as well, being a self-described extremely comedic RPG in which variety is the name of the game. Quote unquote combat includes things as varied as a Note Highway, a DDR style rhythm game, shoot 'em up action, Arkanoid style brick breaker, and even classic turn-based combat, with the developer saying that it's pure chaos all the time, so I'm all in on this. If you've been around indie games, this next title might look familiar to you, since the action combat on the Note Highway is a signature feature of the original Everhood, with the sequel of course being the title of interest here. However, the developers seem to be going in a much trippier direction in everything from the visuals, level design, combat, and even exploration of the world, looking like a weird and wild experience that I cannot wait for. The next game from the developer of Graveyard Keeper is titled Bloom Town A Different Story. One that, most interestingly, combines a live sim, happy go lucky experience like Stardew Valley with turn based combat, having a 1960s Americana setting that sure seems to be evoking Stranger Things. I love both of these genres, so of course I'm in, with the pixel art here being highlighted, as are the crazy enemy and character designs such as the anthropomorphic Corgi, T Rex, and more, and should be excellent. Here's another title that just fits in the RPG bucket since it's both turn-based and real-time, in which other her loving embrace has you exploring the world map like a classic 8-bit JRPG title, but in combat, switches to an almost Smash Bros-like brawler which is very unique. It does also have dungeon puzzles and even mini games like fishing, with exploration interestingly being both from the top down and side scrolling perspectives. As such, it is one of the most unique titles that you will only find in indie games, with their release window being 2024, so there's a good chance we'll see it this year. Twenty twenty four is also the year of Yuling Chronicle Hundred Heroes, which got a release date confirmation a little while back, in which this was one of the most successful Kickstarter projects of all time from the original developers that worked on the Suikoden games, with this being a spiritual successor since the original IP is still with Konami. This came out of a period of time after Kojima was kicked out of Konami, and apparently so did these developers, with the entire F Konami movement leading to massive Kickstarter success, in which the gimmick here is that it literally has a hundred unique playable characters that you can recruit into your party. It looks to have the classic war torn world and political intrigue setting, looking excellent and will be out very soon. I was so excited when I came across Kingdoms of the Dump, since it looks like a SNES style JRPG which I have a soft spot for, and is set in a world of garbage, literally. Our hero is a trash can knight, having to fight his way across the five and a half kingdoms of the dump in order to prevent an all out war. The trash inspired enemies and world looks like the highlight, since I want to see all the creative ways that the developers have used real life objects to make their characters and enemies, with the overworld exploration being in a mode 7 world map with an airship, and you also have jumping, platforming, and character special abilities that you can use, giving me a little bit of a chain echoes vibe in terms of potential. 
And of course, Toby Fox's Delta Rune is of interest since people absolutely love Undertale and this game already has a massive fandom with the strange episodic release of Chapter 1 in 2018 and Chapter 2 in 2021, with it becoming a commercially available product after Chapters 3 and 4 are out and might be soon. So when it does, or when the elusive final Chapter 5 is released, get ready for the internet to be absolutely flooded with this game. If you want third-person action RPGs, watch this video to learn about 25 upcoming titles.